cannot express and in street the goodness of our God and we come to him with hearts overflowing with love we're gonna join together as we sing the intro it we have come into his house gathered in his name to worship him
we can do much better than that. Happy Sabbath, everyone. Are you happy to be in the house of the Lord? If you're happy and you know it, say amen. If you're thankful for the gift of life, say thank you, Jesus. And if you're richly blessed and highly favored, let me see you wave your hand and give God the highest praise. Hallelujah, indeed, it is good to be in the house of the Lord. Uh, it was our desire to be here a little earlier, but um, I'm happy for the pastoral time. Because Pastor Bignal, they didn't know that pastors can't be late. Say amen, my church. We went by Lancaster. We haven't been there since the crusade. That's four weeks. We went there to do lesson review. Sister Clark, as you know, would have lost her son. And she also has a son who is suffering from gunshot wounds as well. So we stopped by with the family just to pray with and to encourage them before trying to get here. But thank God we are here. What do you say? And I'm happy to see the turnout. It's a beautiful look. And I want to stamp in each of your foreheads, Ellen Street, SDA. So Ella, just get the stamp around the back. We'll stamp all of you before you leave. Don't worry, it's not the mark of the beast. But it's good to be here this morning. Sister Richards and I are delighted to see all our friends and family who have come to fellowship with us. Whether you're from Northern Caribbean University, you're from Ellen Street, you're from Old England, you're from Maranatha, or from wherever you have come to fellowship with us, from Edgeware, where we just launched an expedition. And to God be the glory, we have our new believers, Brother Alvin, here with us. What do you say? I'm going to invite all our new members to just stand and be acknowledged at this time. Sister Crystal, Brother Arville, uh, Brother Barrett, yes. Uh, Brother Wynn and family, I hope I get the names. It's Ju and Stefan. I got it right. Praise the Lord. The family is here with us. And Brother Alando Bailey is all the way at the back. And we say to God be the glory. All England, you're in the house, but everybody will say, Praise the Lord. It is a good feeling to be in the house of the Lord. We also have with us. Uh, specially invited to speak to us, Pastor Derek Bignall. Now, if you don't know this name, then you are not anywhere near here, Sister Eva. When I went to Northern Caribbean University, um, Christian education, it was that he taught. I was not privileged to be in his class, but I was privileged for my teacher to be absent so I could be in his class. Because when I went to NCU, they told us, if you did not do Christian education with Pastor Bignal, then you have not gone to NCU. Any other person who has a witness like that? If you didn't do at least Christian education, I think he did life and teachings as well. Uh, life and teachings of Christ. If you did not do his class, then you did not go to NCU. So I went to NCU because my teacher was absent and I went to his class. Praise the Lord. Lady Ivan Bignal is here. Uh, she served formerly as Vice President of Northern Caribbean University. Um, she is now retired from that post, but never tired, still serving the Lord. Uh, their loving daughter would have served us here um, as one of our counselors during our, our family and children treat. And she continues to lend service. So the family has been intricately involved here at Ellen Street, and we are grateful. Today we are very honored. Great, sir. With over 50 years of experience, not tired. I want to walk in your shoes someday. He's still serving the Lord. Would have served at the union level as president. Would have served the conference level. Would have served as a pastor. And the last time we spoke some months ago, you told me that you're in coaching now. So you're coaching the next generation. We are pleased to have such an individual under the guidance of God's Holy Spirit to speak to us today. I pray God's blessing on his life, on his family who is here to support as he leads out. I also want to take the opportunity to welcome those who are from Asia. I know I missed a few faces, Sister Palm, and I know I'll get in trouble when I begin to call out because there are so many persons from Victoria Town, from maybe across the district, that is represented. We welcome the Campbell's family who will be ministering in a special way. We welcome all of God's children, Pusey Hill, and pray God's richest blessings as we worship, as we fellowship, and as we continue to enjoy the beauty of God's presence. May God bless you as we worship together. Let me slip in a quick little pastoral note to share that come June, Pusey Hill and Victoria Town will be locked together for an evangelistic series right there at Pusey Hill. And so all the singing voices that will minister here today, your next marching order 
is to be at Pusey Hill to share in the worshipful experience. What do you say? God bless you. God keep you. God cause his face to shine upon you as we continue to worship together. Our divine service song of praise is hymn number 10. Come, Christian, join to sing. Shall we go together? Come, Christians, join to sing. Alleluia. Amen. Loud praise to Christ our King. Alleluia. Amen. Let all with heart and voice be for His love rejoice. Praise His inspiration.
Sir, for the first time, we are led to the right person for the right job today. We can now listen to the right person for the first time. Yes, this is the Mr. Shaikh Kukri. You got to be here. Mr. Mr. Shaikh Kukri. So you come from which quarter town? Maranatha, Ashta, Cedar Grove. from Ellis Street. And I hear somebody said there are folks from here from Santa Cruz, but I don't think somebody anybody show from Santa Cruz today. Do you believe so? So we're gonna ask the folks from way, 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 way down in the bread basket parish to stand at this time. Let me see the person from Santa Cruz. We're gonna make that person feel welcome. Where's that person? If you're from oh come on, a big 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 amen. Friends and loved ones, it's such a pleasure to have you in church today. And if you don't feel welcome, just look around for that friendly face. There's always a smile because Adventist folks have the best smile ever. And you can be recognized. Have yourself a wonderful rest of the day. Amen. There is this thing called music. God gave this gift to human beings. And they are somehow able to connect with the higher powers of heaven. At this time, we have a young, some young family, the Campbell sister, and they're going to come and bless our heart at this time with melodious music as we continue to bask in the blessings of the Lord. There is no situation where my God can be defeated, for he is bigger than my circumstance. And there is no man or mountain that's able to stand against him, for he is maker.
invite the children to move to the front. Sister Wilson from the Maranatha Church will lead out in this story for the children this morning. Good morning, everyone, and happy Sabbath. My name is Maureen, and as the brother said, I'm from Maranatha Church. Our story today is about a talking parrot. Have you heard a parrot talking, anybody? Yes? Okay, I hope they were saying nice things. Okay, our story is about um, the lady who had a parrot. Her name was Grandma Maria, and she lived with her family in Puerto Rico. And this parrot was so good and listened to everything that Grandma Maria was saying. Grandma Maria was the only Christian person in her family. You know, she tried to get her other family members to join her for worship. Sometimes they came, but sometimes they didn't. So she would sing and she would pray, she would read the Bible. She also listened to sermons and she would share the sermons with the parrot because sometimes they were the only audience she had. So one day, her husband worked downstairs. He was a carpenter. He built tables. What else do carpenters build? Pardon? Chairs. What else? cupboards and said puppets okay tables yes and he built all these pieces of uh, furniture for the local store and then the store would come and collect he had someone who worked with him and his name was Carlos now Carlos had a very bad habit and I really do hope that you children when you grow up you won't take this habit up he smoked. And sometimes when Carlos was, Carlos was working, you know, he's making a table and he's banging the hammers and he's putting a nail in and then he thinks, oh dear, I'm a bit tired. So he'll go and have a break and have a cigarette. And now these parrots, oh, I meant to tell you, their names were Susie and Pepe. Susie and Pepe, what were their names? That's right, and they were very attentive parrots. So when they noticed that Carlos Hammer was quiet, they would say to him, Carlos, get back to work. And then he, that would make him upset because then he then knew that he wasn't working and he should have been. Grandma Maria, she was very, very busy. She was a good cook. She had lots of grandchildren living with her, and so she would be making, she would be baking. What are some of the things that your grandma or your mom makes? What are some of the things she bakes? She makes pudding, and that has a nice smell. Hmm? Yes, yeah, she used the flour to make the pudding, and cakes, nice smell. What else? muffins and yes she would make chicken and can you, smell, can you imagine the smell so all the children in the community would think they could sniff and think wow grandma maria is cooking shall we go by and get some so they did and she was very kind and very generous so she would share with all the children in the com dumplings yes everybody like dumplings don't they especially fried dumplings so, Grandma Maria, you know, while she was having her worship and she's telling uh, the parrots, Susie and Pedro, about the love of Jesus, her favorite song was, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. So, this, this 
uh, Carlos was a bit fed up with his parrot. So one day he thought, I am going to teach them a lesson. He let them out of the cage and they flew away and went into this tree nearby. So the neighbors were all there and next morning they heard this noise of holy, holy, holy. And they've never heard this song before. So they went out and they were looking around to see where this singing was coming from. Grandma Maria, Grandma Maria also heard the sound, so she went out to look what was going on, and she saw uh, that it was Susie and Pedro, her parrots. She then told the people that they were her like evangelists. You know, they were helping her to spread the news about Jesus because Jesus loves everybody and Jesus wants to save everybody. So then Carlos, uh, the, the carpenter, he thought, that didn't go well. That didn't go the way I wanted to go because all these people are now hearing about Jesus. And do you think those parrots, do you think they were good evangelists? Why? That's right. They were helping Grandma Maria to be ministers in sharing the word of God. And do you think at school, at home, or when you are playing in the community, do you think you could also be ministers like, yes? Or what would you do? I would do is that I would pray for the people and I would share the gospel of God by singing and like preaching. Well done, because you were doing that today. You sang beautifully. That was a beautiful song you sing. And this is what we can do as children. You know, we can all be little missionaries. At school, we can tell somebody, I went to church on Sabbath, and this, is my mem this was my memory verse. You can help, you can pray for your grandmas, or anybody who you know who needs to know about the love of Jesus. I'll just pray for my mommy. That's good, that's good, that's important, praying for your mommy, because mommies love their ch children. I pray for my dad and my mom and my grandma. Well done. See, you're all ministers already. So this is what we need to be, little ministers, just like Susie and, uh, and uh, Pepe, the parrots, were. Thank you. Now, do you think that uh, this story was a good story and we could all be part of Jesus' army to go out and be missionaries. Do you think we can all be missionaries? Well done. Right. Who would like to pray for me? Oh, we've got a lot of hands, a lot of hands. I'm going to take two prayers. I'm going to take two prayers. Okay, would you like to pray? Let's go. Oh, Father God, who in heaven, we thank you for this beautiful day that you made us see again. And we thank you for waking up us this morning in our right mind, oh God. Thank you for everything you've done for us. Thank you for life and for health and strength and for the food on the table, dear Father God. Bless all the children around this community. Bless my mother, my fathers, and my brothers and sisters, and my nieces and nephews. We tell the church congregations, oh God, bless all the lessons and the children around this community. Help us, oh God, to love you and keep our minds on you, oh God. Be in the heart and the minds of every children around this community. Be with us, oh God, as I ask in you in the name of Father and Son and Holy Spirit, my God, my strength and redeemer, and in your my trust, amen. Thank you. Oh, would you like to pray too? Right. Heavenly Father, 
Thanks for giving me life. Thank you. And for loving us. Help us to be good boys and girls. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Good students. And shall we now go back to our seats? Right? Jesus loves the little children, all the children of the world. Safely through another week, God has brought us in his house of worship. What do you say? And if you're happy to, in the, to be in the house of worship today, let me hear you say, praise the Lord. Let me hear you say, hallelujah. Indeed, he's worthy to be praised. At this time, we ask the deacons, and deaconesses to come forward to collect the tithes and offering. Let us pray. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be your precious name. At this time we give you all the glory, all the honor, because you are worthy of our praise. As we are about to collect the offering, we are asking you to bless it and help it that it may help someone to reach the kingdom of heaven. Help us to give it willingly and help us to give it freely. To Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Into the house of the Lord. We bring sacrifice of praise into the house of the Lord. And we offer all to to the again we bring the sacrifice of praise into the house of the Lord we bring the sacrifice of praise into the house of the Lord and we offer up to thee the sacrifices offer up to thee the 
we offer up to Thee the sacrifices of thanksgiving, and we offer up to Him the sacrifices of praise. We sacrifice of praise into the house of the Lord. We bring the sacrifice of praise into the house of the Lord. And we offer up to thee the sacrifices When you find it, say amen, and we can start. Find it? Find it? Hear, O Israel, the Lord, our God, is one Lord. And these words which I command thee this day shall be in thine heart. And thou shalt bind them for a sign upon, upon thine hand, and they shall be as frontlets between thine highs. Um, nine and last, thou shalt write them upon the posts of thy house and on thy gates. You're, e you're, you're in the reading of the portion of God, all the words. As we pray, take our hearts and minds for children 
in Ellen Street, cried, Lord, have mercy. Have mercy. Have mercy upon our school. We are thankful, Lord, that you have called us out of darkness into your marvelous light. We thank you for the blessings that you bestowed upon us each day. We thank you for the sunshine and we thank you for the rain. We thank you for the fresh air and everything that you have created for our benefit. But Lord, nothing can compare with the sacrifice of your son, Jesus Christ, for us today. We are not calling and we are not talking on the, about the dead God. We are talking about the living and true God that loved us so much that he gave his life for us. We need to step and think, Lord, who you are. When we look upon the sun, the moon, the stars, even the planets, how great you are, Lord, and your love is more than we can ever think here. Over a hundred years ago, my father stood in this district and he cried out the nearness of your coming. And he did not live to see the ark of safety that had been prepared for your children. But now this ark of safety had been established in, in, in Eden Street. And that in those days, when Noah cried to the inhabitants of the antediluvian world, and asked them to take place in the ark, and they refused. Only saved, it was saved out of the ark. This church is an ark in any street today, Lord. We need to understand. Back in those days, even the animal, the donkey, and the cats, and the rabbits, and the pigs, and everything make their way into the ark. And it did not have any impression on them, the, the people at that time. But now I am praying that the people in any street will take heed to the word of God and find themselves in the ark before you find that it's too late. Oh God, have mercy, have mercy, have mercy upon us. We thank you for the blessings that you have bestowed upon us from morning until now. And as we're about to hear the word from your servant, Lord, we pray that you will hide hiding behind the cross and that they speak to our hearts now, Lord, and we accept before it's too late. It's again, Lord, let everything that is said and done here today be a covenant to your divine will. Bless the senior citizens, bless the children, bless the young adults, bless our visitors, and bless everyone today. And I pray that everyone on the listen to my voice today will be a part of your loving kingdom when you come with those which I've been working with and working for. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I never promised God retirement, says Pastor Derek Bignell, the longest serving worker of the Seventh-day Adventist Church in Jamaica.
This was after when he was recognized for his long service to the church in 2016, where he had gone over 50 years serving his church. Pastor Bignell's mother wanted him to be a teacher, but in his heart of hearts, he knew that he should be studying theology. So he didn't want to dishonor his mother. So when he came to West Indies College at the time, he decided that um, he was studying theology and education and decided that the one that he did better in, he would continue studying. And he found himself doing better at Greek than at Spanish. And so theology won out. Pastor Bignell has gone back and forth over the years between serving as a district pastor and as administrator at the conference and union level. Regardless of the post, he retains his personal touch. This is what he says. I love my district churches. When you reside where the people are, you can really minister to them. We're happy for the life of Pastor Bignell and the way he has led his church. His beautiful wife is with us, Sister Yvonne Bignell. Could you just stand and be recognized at this time? Come on, church. Come on, Ellen Street. <laughs> Pastor, we are happy to have you here. It's a blessing to have you in this beautiful edifice. And you being here will just make this place such so much more. Have yourself a good day. Sorry about that. But just before Pastor Bignell comes to us with the message that the Lord has in store for us, we'll have the meditation song from Brother Jeffrey Powell. Then the next voice with that of our dear Pastor. Have a Sabbath again, everyone. Okay. 
an empty place if not for grace I'm a hopeless case an empty place if not for grace I'm a hopeless case an empty place Thank God for grace, just as I am with just one plea, but that thy blood, it was shed for me. Good afternoon, church. I'll be doing two things, and then, and then I'll be on my way. It's a pleasure to be. It's a pleasure to be here, Ellen Street. I have passed by this place a number of times, and I was sure I was not. I wouldn't be able to find the Adventist church because I have passed by here to Campbell's Castle, I've passed by here to Asia, and I have never seen a church here. What a splendid edifice. What a splendid edifice. I think this is just about the best we have here in the parish of Manchester. I have walked around the place. I have looked and I have tried to find out how on earth Ellen Street Adventists could have an edifice like this with the plans. And so I got to change my the sermon a little bit today because this fits so well in this place and the vision and the people who have brought the vision and the people and people who have given quality contribution that God's words can be spread in this vicinity somebody said you know no, I, 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 said, I said to Elder Johnson, who is the person who gave that pastoral prayer? Is he associated with 
Elder Aston Barnes, he said it's, it's his brother. And, and then he said, and Dr. Clarence Barnes is here. The only centurion in this place. The only centurion in this place. What a gift. What a legacy. Mr. J. Barnes and wife have left for Adventists in Jamaica. What a legacy with these children. So, I've got to just change this families in mission that you asked me to speak. But I had to, I think I had to say a word on the Barnes family. never die. Somebody said, when I become prime minister of this country, I'm going to change all the area here, Campus Castle. I'm going to call it Barnes Country. Change for this place to be Barnes Castle or Barnes thing. A legacy to the country and to Adventism. Thank you. One beautiful thing that I have seen, it's a long time I haven't seen boys and girls in the front bench of a church. Now I've been many places. And I cannot find the boys and girls. When I say, where are the boys and girls? I have to look on the balcony. But I come to Ellen Street and there are, many of them are right up on, right up on top like the captain's bakery. And so I said, I'm going to give five minutes to them. I'm going to sing a song that generally, some people believe that's the only song I know, but I know many more, but I'm going to do this one just because it is shorter than the others. My wife doesn't really like this one too tough. She wants me to sing a longer one. But I'm going to take this shorter version for my boys and girls. Is that all right, church? Okay, good. Okay, good. So, no. I, I, want, I, I want to see my boys and girls because I want to sing for them. Uh, I want us to sing a song together, perhaps. That's what I should say. I want, to, I want us to sing a song together. All the boys and girls. Where are the boys and girls?
Your theme is Families in Mission. And I want to make just a few points. Because sometimes with the long preaching, some people don't hear, some people don't remember. And it is said that people, don't rem people remember just about five things for the day of five things in a class, and most three. Point one that I will speak on about families, that families, as everybody would know, is God's invention. And God said, Genesis chapter one, let us make man Mankind in our own image, verse 27, after our likeness. And so God made two precious institutions that we have up to today. But one gets, let me say to the Adventist church, one seems to get a little bit more regard than the other. But the two institutions, one was family, the other was Sabbath. Well, may I say that even Sabbath is getting a big beating. Sabbath is not getting that high regard that it had to 50 years ago. I mean, perhaps let me tell you something. When I was the age of many of you down there, if not most. And a Friday comes. And Adventists would be warned by non-Adventists if they were seen in town around 3 o'clock to say, your Sabbath going to catch you. The Sabbath going to catch up because everybody knows that sunset, fire lockdown, no smoke. Well, we don't need smoke. We use electric and gas stove, so no smoke ascending. But Sabbath get a beating now. I tell you something. 50, 60 years ago, 9.15, Sabbath school full. And people would walk miles, miles. When you go to church and you see a car, if you saw a car or some, a horse, you know, pass and come. We have more. <laughs> As a matter of fact, I went to I went to a church not too a few weeks ago, and everybody comes in a car. Nobody walks, but they don't come nine fifteen though. They come at eleven and after eleven. But fifty years ago, people walk miles, and nine o'clock singing. No musical instruments. But when they open their mouth organs, people would stop to listen Adventists sing. The point is God made family. He made family in his image. Which means God's character was on their DNA. And God's character, as he showed Moses a little part, he was gracious, long-suffering, merciful. And so that was Adam and Eve. That was the first home. 
you could go in. Mercy was in that home. Joy was in that home. Peace was in that home. Support was in that home. Compassion. As a matter of fact, there was a quality love in that home. Man tries to replicate it in some stories called Romeo and Juliet. But Romeo and Juliet couldn't touch that quality love in the home. It was not just something acted out, but it was spoken. Uh, there's a man who wrote a book about the five languages of love. Every language of love was expressed in the God. Love to God, love to each other. Sin came, and Ellen White says in the book Education, the image of God in man was almost totally nigh obliterated. And so things have changed. And this is why Jesus came to restore. The image of God in man. Jesus came to restore the image of God in man. And that's what family ought to be. That's the mission of family. To re help restore the image of God in man. And it's a beautiful image. I like how the psalmist puts it. In Psalm 144. Verse 12. Hear this. Psalm 144, verse 12. Write that down. That our sons may be as plants grown up in their youth. That our daughters may be as cornerstones polished after the similitude of a palace. That our sons may be as Plants grown up in their youth. You wouldn't understand how, how, how wonderful this imagery of plants is until you get into a desert where you look around and it's a sea of sand. Then you'd understand what he's speaking about as plants that your daughters. May be as cornerstones polished after the similitude of a palace. How can this happen? That our sons grow up as plants and our daughters as cornerstones, polished cornerstones. We've got to go back to Deuteronomy chapter 6. It takes hard work. And if this were hard during the times of, 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 of Moses when this was written, I tell you, we have it a thousand times worse now. And God said in Deuteronomy chapter 6, that was so nicely read by you and our dear sister. Israel... That your God is one. Israel, love your God with all your heart. That's the first and greatest commandment. The second one is love your neighbor as yourself. And when you as parents love God with all your heart, teach it. To your children. Teach it to your children. And it is a 24-7 responsibility of God. You must teach them diligently. Talk of them when you sit in your house. Talk of them when you walk by the way. Talk of them when you lie down. Talk of them when you rise up. You know, when I was 
a young person, the, one of the biggest problems of the church was, do you read Hardy Boys comic uh, story or do you read comic? Uh, 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 do you go to the movies? That was one of the things the church members used to almost harass us young people. Do you read these books? I want to tell you, Rex Morgan and all those things and Hardy Boy stories don't count to what these children have on their cell phone, on their laptop. As a matter of fact, there's no movie that could be shown in uh, the theaters that used to be in Mandeville. I don't know if there's any there, you know, movie houses. You don't have to. You get it on your laptop, you get it on your cell phone. As a matter of fact, as a matter of fact, Children are more aware of Peppa Pig than Jesus. Oh, what's, what's some of the other one? Peppa Pig is just one. What are some of the others thing on, on TV and the, that the children like to watch? Eh? Coco Melon! Listen, man, you update, man, high tech. Paw Patrol. And then when the next generation comes, nobody, co nobody comes to church. We have not, we have not taught them. It's a 24 7. Write them upon your hands. Write them on the post of your house. Write in the post of your gates. Write them. Bombard them with God's words. And some of us, the only thing you can find upon our gates is beware of bad dogs. And, and unless it, there are some of us who are grown up on morning worship. Wake up five o'clock because mother has to work or father has to go or walk or take donkey to go to bush. And we would cry about that sometimes getting up early. We would call it early morning, five o'clock. And some of us never love it then, but we love it now. And all like and and all the Wednesday night prayer meeting, Wednesday night prayer meeting. No, we don't have to come with that. We just stay home and zoom it. And there is nothing like coming together in the house of worship. It doesn't have any second. There's nothing like that. Families in mission, we have what because of it. We have work to do because we have to give an account to God on what has been done to the flock that he has given to us. We're not going to escape it. Some of us want to go to heaven. As long as I am there alone, that's all right. No, you're not going to be there. You're going to give an account to that which was given to you. So, and so when I come to a church like this and I see sons of, I think it's John Barnes, was John daddy's name? I think it's a J. And I, I praise God. I praise God 
from members of the church whose children still carry the torch of truth. Because I'm going to tell you something. A lot of us as pastors and all kind of pastors and president, um, we don't know where our children are. And our children don't know where we are either. A lot of us as big position people in church, our children are with the devil doing obia, obia, and all kind of thing. I'm telling you the truth. I, I, I tell you sometimes, sometimes they come and talk about family life and family life and family life and family life. And some of our leaders don't have a family or a life. Sometimes it goes from like church, just have a show. Just have a show. This is not a show. You, 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 I, I challenge you. Ask some of the pastors you have even in, your, in, the, even in this country, right there in the union office, they don't know where their wives are. And sometimes I get so upset when we talk about this. They are sending us down messages. It's not message we want. It's the living we want. It's the time to live we are talking about. But some of us are just concerned. Uh, can, he, can he preach? Is he a good preacher? We only want good preaching. We don't want good preaching now. We want good living. Exemplary living. Because here's the point. I like how Ellen White puts it. Ellen White says, we have to leave a port to reach another port. And Jesus in his prayer says, your will be done on earth. Come on, say church. Your will be done on earth. When God made earth, God made earth to reflect heaven, you know. And that's his purpose. God made earth to reflect heaven. Man was made in God's image to reflect God. Families were created to reflect heaven. That's why when, when there was one pulse of harmony... When Adam and Eve were created, and there will be when at the next coming, one pulse of harmony, and the pulse of harmony must begin to beat now. Because God's kingdom, God's kingdom is now, although it is not yet in totality. And we have got to begin to live now like family, as though it is in heaven. That's the point I want to leave with you. Let me read from this little book, Testimony Treasures. And not just as, not just as my nuclear or extended family, I want to say as a church, I want to say as a church, the church on earth, is to reflect the church in heaven. Is one church. And I want to tell you that some of us are not behaving that way. When the church begins to take members to court, it's not behaving like heaven. Hear what Ellen White says in this book, Testimony Treasures, Volume 3. I'm going to read a little bit on page 32. Hear what she says. The church of God below is one with the church of God above. Believers on the earth and the beings in heaven who have never fallen constitute one church. 
every heavenly intelligence is interested in the assemblies of the saints who on earth meet to worship God. Some people don't get it, you know. Some people really don't get it. I don't understand what our assembly here really is. In the inner court of heaven, they listen to the testimony of the witnesses for Christ in the outer court on earth. And the praise and thanksgiving from the worshippers below is taken up in the heavenly anthem and praise and rejoicing sound through the heavenly courts because Christ has not died in vain for the fallen sins of Adam. While angels drink from the fountainhead, the saints on earth drink of the pure streams flowing from the throne, the streams that make glad the city of our God. The church on earth is a part of the church in heaven. The families on earth must be part of the families of heaven. And some of us can't even live with our wives or our husbands. Some of us can't even preach to our children. I will want to go to heaven. And tell me God knows. God knows. All the purpose. Let me tell you something. When I was at Andrews University... I was going to take a, a certain course, Foundations in Christian Education, and I looked for the textbook, and the textbook was written by one George Knight, Dr. George Knight, Professor George Knight. And I looked and I saw another person who was going to teach it, and I said, listen to me, I'm not doing it George Knight. I'm going to do it with the other man because if that other man asks me a question or two, perhaps I can trick him, but I can't trick the man who wrote the book. Let me tell you something. You, you see this thing called love? There was a song, some boys sang many years ago, I wonder, wonder who, who wrote the book of love. Let me tell you something. It's God who wrote the book of love. Listen, we can't fool him about this thing called love, what it is and what it does, what it looks like, what it feels like. We can't tell God, but we can tell, we can tell government that I have to divorce because of incompatibility. You can't tell God. And we can tell court a lot of things. And court can't say no, court will accept it, but God knows. The most sacred tie on earth is a family. But you know, one person says, you teach like how you were taught. And some of us never heard our parents say to you, I love you. Some of us, the only time our parents touch us is when they go and beat us. Yeah, some of us. Never got a good night kiss from a parent. Yeah, some of us. And perhaps you never get it, you don't know how to give it. And that's why when it comes to this thing of love and compassion and empathy, we have to look at Calvary and see how Jesus did it. And know that he can 
transform our lives so that we can give what our parents never gave us because he has given it to us. Love and forgiveness and compassion and understanding so that we can teach that to our children. Listen. Listen, church. We have got a lot of preaching. And a lot of people can say, yeah, I know, I know, I know. Listen, when a child says, I know, that child is not really saying anything of substance in it. Adventists know a lot of it. And when Adventists just say, I know, I know, Adventists, you're not saying nothing yet. Because Benjamin Bloom, an educator, on his cognitive taxonomy, says the lowest level of the cognitive domain, the lowest level is knowledge. I'm going to tell you. The lowest level is knowledge. A higher step than knowledge is application. To be able to apply what you know. No, the second, to comprehend, to understand what you know. That's the second. And then a higher is to apply. Then you can analyze, you can synthesize, you can evaluate, you can create. May I put it in an example? When I was, this little one, when I was in B class, what, what is, let us say kindergarten too. In our days, we had to have everything, every calculation in our head. No, no. Every calculation, even when you're doing GC, end, 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 end of high school exam, you can't go into mathematics class with any, well, we never had calculators then, but they used to have some index, you know. You couldn't go in, you have to have, so we knew, we had to do two ones, two, from the, two ones, two, two twos, four, two three six, two fours, eight, two fives, ten, two sixes, twelve, two seven, fourteen, we know that. And every, every day, so on Monday and Wednesday, we have timetable. On Tuesdays and Thursdays, we would have mentors. Mental. So every day, Monday and Wednesday, we don't do one, two, and, and to be tired of it, man. And so we said, I do one, two. I do two, four. I do two. And teacher didn't like that. So teacher come and say, son. Your teacher come up one day. Your teacher with her bright self come. Two into four. Not a man, no. Not a man, no. <laughs> so teacher, come here, teacher. Say after me. Say after me. Two ones, two. Two into two goes one time. So we study thing, man. We know it, man. We, sometimes we all say 213, although the book has 220. Two ones, two. Two into two goes one time. A two, two, four. Two into four goes two times. A two, three, six. Two into six goes three times. A two, four, eight. Two into eight goes for him. And we sit and we sing it because as we, we, way back there, we start hip hop, you know. We start hip hop, they just take it away from us. Now. And so when we start to sing it two times, and teacher comes up, hops, hops at me, and comes, all right, all right, all right. Here, here, teacher, with her smart self. I have four apples to divide equally between two boys. How many would each get? Not a man knows. Not a man knows. Because the only thing we know is two, two, four, two. And we, so we know the thing, just wrong, but we didn't understand it so that we could apply it. And I want to say that that's the same thing in church. Sometimes we, we can we, we can speak out the doctrine, but we don't understand it to apply it. We can't demonstrate it. And that is one aspect of teaching and learning. 
psycho. So much. Your mind and your body, you, be, you understand it and you can do, you can demonstrate. Psychomotor. That is killing the church. The church knows a whole heap about the seven plagues, the seven this and the seven that, and all the sevens inside the Bible. And we know every we can talk about it and talk about live it. Show compassion, show mercy, show justice, show understanding. Demonstrate that. And that's why church is sick. Families are sick. Give the quality support. That's necessary, but we can talk about this and we can say who do that and say that, but do it yourself. If the mission of the family is not the mission of Jesus, it has nothing. It's saying nothing. And I'm going to stop here. Is no, is not, no, we don't know. Because Jesus has given us a formula to live. Jesus has given us a formula, the formula to, he has shown us and he will give us power to do it. Something is wrong, something wrong with our spiritual mind. He says, forgive and you will be forgiven. If you forgive men their trespasses, Father will forgive you. And there are some of us who die going to hell, not forgiving anybody. And can come and preach like Paul and sing like angel. Jesus says, good measure, pressed down, shaken together. Running over whatever you give, that's how it's going to come back to you. And some of us... Come like rock. You beat us so you knock a water come out of us. Jesus says, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he's thirsty, give him drink. That is how you quell. But what some of us say, fire for fire, boom for boom. And he has showed us how we must support the weak. And he said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. And some of us are tight like a communist hand. Jesus has shown us. He has taught us. He has demonstrated it. And he says he will give us the power. We're not catching it. Our character not ready yet. So say after me, church, how our character is formed. How our character is formed because it's your character you're taking to heaven. So a thought. No, I won't. I'm asking you to say it after me now. I'm asking you to repeat it after me now. So a thought, reap an act. So an act, reap a habit. So a habit, reap a character. So a character. Reap a destiny. Say it again. So a thought. Reap an act. So an act. Reap a habit. So a habit. Reap a character. 
saw a character reap a destiny. I never used to like uh, when my wife goes to bed uh, and she says she wants water. I have to leave the bedroom now for go back for water. And I used to say, one night, one night, I was thirsty and I said, I feel thirsty. Bam! Within two minutes, water is that there. Water is at my disposal to drink. And one night we were in bed. And man wanted to sleep. And, he, and before the woman shut her mouth, here, I feel thirsty. I just turned my back. <laughs> and before the woman shut her mouth, here again, a little louder, I feel thirsty. I said, I know you just have come from the kitchen, why never bring you one? <laughs> and then it struck me that the other night where well, I whispered, she jumped, and I jumped out of the bed and went for the water. And not every time, but most times. I jump, I go for the water. I go for, until now, it is no problem to go to go for water. So I thought, reap and act, and I start to go for the water. It's not any problem to go to the water. Let me tell you something. It's saying me, so when somebody in church tell lie on you, God giving you practice to learn to forgive them. And the more you forgive, the more better you can forgive. You understand? When somebody inside church or, or some, and don't like you or whatever, God is saying, hey, hey, you like that person. That person doesn't feel like all you. You like that person. You be compassionate. You be kind. You be generous. You be, practice it. You just keep away that old evil thought and fill it inside with a nice thought. And the more you exercise it, listen, the Ellen White says, as it is in the natural, so it is in the spiritual. If you want strong muscles, you got to exercise them. If you want strong spiritual muscles, you got to exercise it. And this time church begins to uh, exercise some of the spiritual muscles of compassion and empathy uh, and kindness and generosity. What do you say about it? And then we can say, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. We who love the Lord, demonstrate your joys. Let your joys be known. Let people know how Jesus has transformed your life. And you who were rough under his grace, become refined. Support one another. Forgive one another. They don't have to forgive you, you know. You have to forgive them. Be kind to one another. And I tell this story for the boys and girls. I, I, are my boys and girls here ready? I want to tell you a story. I want, it, I want to tell you a story. I'm going to tell you a story and sit down. You with me? A lot of children... So for bullying in school, huh? bullying, and they don't know how to handle bullying. When there was a little boy, say grade three, and sometimes in grade three you have some big boys. There was a little boy, I'm going to call him Jimmy, and a big boy, I'm going to call him John. And John, all like to pick on little Jimmy. And that's what, anytime, the, anytime, the big ones are scared. They like to pick on the little ones and, and they will feel big. But it's because they have a small mind. Even church, even church, there are some brethren, there are some brethren cannot give up head deacon and head, head deacon and head elder. There must always be head deacon and head elder for life. There's one church I know, 
they switch it around. Every year, they give a next person, and all the others support that one. I know a church like that, but this big Johnny. And the little Jimmy couldn't take it anymore. One evening, he came home crying, crying, crying. He, he never even remember. he never even recognized him. He just went into his room, and he slammed the door, and he never even heard when his father was knocking on the door. And he just crying. You wait until I get to school. You wait until I get to school tomorrow. I'm going to do this. So daddy pushed the door, and he went inside, and he said, what's the matter, son? He said, he said that big, that big boy, John, he's always picking on me. Uh, and he's allowing all of the boys to, 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 to mock me. Uh, and, uh, and I'm going to fix his business. So he said, what do you intend to do? He said, I'm going to make a club and I'm going to club him tomorrow. And the father said, okay, how would you like to burn him up? Oh, little Jimmy's eyes opened and said, man, that's what I'd like to do. Burn him up. And so daddy said, all right. Tomorrow when you go to school, you take some extra lunch and extra juice. And you share it with Big John. And little Jimmy said, but dad, that's not right. That's, that, that, oh, dad, that's foolish. Hey, and daddy said, you, haven't you read it in the book of Romans chapter 12 where it says, and in the book of Proverbs where it says, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he's thirsty, give him drink. And by so doing, you will put coals of fire on his head. He said, what, did, what do coals of fire do? He said, oh, coals of fire burn. But daddy said, listen to me, man. You do that tomorrow. And if it doesn't work, when you come back, tell me, I'll make the biggest club for you. Is that all right? And he said, oh. and so they made that and made an agreement. Good, they made that agreement. And so the following morning, mommy made some extra sandwiches and gave little Jimmy some extra juice. And he went to school. He went to school and he sat in his seat. He never went for break. So he stayed right there in the class. He never went out until lunchtime came. Some of the children went home for lunch and some had lunch at school. And he went by the window to have his lunch. And he looked through the window. Who did he see outside there? Going around that big tree, picking up a stone, throwing it. He was Big John. And Big John was just walking around. And so he called him and said, Oh, Big John never felt too good, but you know, when, when, when you're hungry uh, and somebody calls you, and uh, you know, you, summer calls, you got to go. And so he came up and he said, don't you have any lunch? He said, come and share my lunch. Come and share my lunch. And he came around and he came and he sat beside him. And so he shared his sandwiches evenly and he shared his juice. And then, and then, and then, and then, and then after they were finished, you know, um, I'll tell you something. When, when you do somebody something and they give you something to eat, it's very hard for it to pass it through. It takes a long time to come down, eh? But, oh boy, I eventually did. And, 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 and then Big John said, oh, you know, uh, little Jimmy, I, I, I'm, I, I'm so sorry. Uh, for treating you this way and he apologized and he said from today you and I are best friends <laughs> and so little Jimmy went out went outside and 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 it was time for school to start over and 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 and, and, and the boys were coming and one boy is, I said hey that's little Jimmy let us and they raced toward little Jimmy when they raced toward little Jimmy Big John came up and said, all of you, leave Jimmy alone. Says, Jimmy's my best friend. And anybody who touches him has to come through me first. And all the boys back, all the boys back. I said, but did you? He said, yeah, but he's my friend. And that afternoon when little Jimmy went home, father said, come tell me what happened. He said, daddy, 
I burn him up. I burn him up. It is sad to know that we as Christians don't know how to make peace. I want to go to heaven. And only peacemakers are going to be in heaven. It is sad that some of us don't know mercy and we want to go to heaven. And only the merciful will be in heaven. It, it, it's so sad that some of us don't have pure heart with one another. And we want to go to heaven and only the pure in heart shall be in heaven. It is time for us to demonstrate the power of God. By God's grace, I want to ask him to help me to be the one to follow him because I look to Calvary. Do I have someone else who wants to raise a hand with me to say, by the grace of God, I want to be like him to show others as I look to Calvary. Father, we long to be perfectly whole and want you forever to live in our soul. To break down every idol, cast out every foe. Wash us and make us whiter, by, whiter than snow. And may we truly represent you in these last days of perverse and corrupt generation, we pray in Jesus' name. Have your souls been blessed, church? Amen. Have your souls been blessed? Amen. Let me hear a bigger amen. amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Now this day you shall never forget. What do you say? Amen. Because we have heard something that will change our lives because we want to go to heaven. Isn't that so? And so we are going to close this service with the hymn 422. Come we that love the Lord and let our joys be known. Shall we stand please? Street. We're marching, we're marching.
Gracious Father in heaven, we lift our voices and our hearts to you for having graced us with your presence. We trust that we, by your Holy Spirit, will, from this that we have professed so that others can be blessed and we can go home together with you. Thank you for hearing our prayers, we pray in Jesus' name. Dismiss us, Lord, with blessings we pray as from the worship we We are grateful for the time we have spent so far. And as you have been hearing since morning, this is just a part of what the day holds for us in Ellen Street today. So we are trusting that you, you have any, no plans of going because lunch is provided. And as much as possible, stick around with us because there is more in store. So at this time, I'm going to ask you to just bow your heads for a minute. We're going to God, give God thanks and praise for the food that he has provided for us. And then we will partake in a timely manner. Thank you very much. Father in heaven, we pray your blessings upon the food you have blessed us with today. And may it be a means of strengthening us physically. And we look forward to the time when everything in this life will just change for eternity. Thank you for hearing our prayers. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So those who were who took part on the platform, we're going to kindly ask that you just um, walk with us to the front and you will be ushered out and we can greet um, on the outside. 